to uh, the Fred Manali upload. This is called Freaky Fred Manali Part 2. I know I changed the name, but uh, look at my hair. It's already screwed up. And uh, here's another lesson. Never wear sweaters like this when going live. Uh, rule number one of going live, don't wear a sweater like this. Rule number two, don't wear a sweater with a collar like this when you go live. But this is going to be about Fred Manali. Of course, he is a somewhat Zodiac killer suspect, and he's absolutely a suspect in what's known as the Santa Rosa Hitchhiker Murders, which happened in 1972 and 1973. Of course, in the town of Santa Rosa, Northern California, there was seven victims, and those crimes are all still unsolved to this day. And Fred Manali is definitely tied to one of those crimes, the uh, the murder of a lady named... Um, Kim, Win uh, Kim Allen, and she was became a suspect because of Robert Graysmith's book, Zodiac Unmasked. I think uh, Graysmith was trying to tie Arthur Lee Allen into these crimes, or just probably more material for his second book, because his first book was just called Zodiac, and that was all about Arthur Lee Allen being the Zodiac killer with a couple other suspects in there, like Rick Marshall, but it was mainly about Arthur Lee Allen. So I think he just wanted a little more material in uh, his second book, Zodiac Unmasked, and trying to tie in Arthur Lee Allen potentially to the Santa Rosa hitchhiker slings because, as we know, Arthur Lee Allen had a trailer in Santa Rosa. His main residence was, of course, 32 Fresno Street in Vallejo, California, but he also had a trailer. I think it was at the Sunset Trailer Park in Santa Rosa where he kept his chipmunks and things like that. And it was also always mentioned that when the police searched Arthur Lee Allen's home at 32 Fresno Street that they should have also searched his trailer in Santa Rosa and they did not do that. I think uh, that was a missed opportunity. If they were going to find uh, evidence on Arthur Lee Allen, they probably should have searched both of those places simultaneously. Of course, the trailer was done uh, first. That was the first thing they searched. And I think the home, the 32 Fresno residence was searched uh, uh, sometime later after that, years later that they finally searched 32 Fresno Street where they found the, the pipe bomb materials and things like that. Some things Arthur Lee Allen collected that had to do with the Zodiac case. And uh, another famous story was when they were searching Arthur Lee Allen's trailer in Santa Rosa, he actually showed up after they were, after they had a search warrant, they were inside searching it. Arthur Lee Allen actually showed up after they had started searching his trailer in Santa Rosa. And while he was there, they, and they, by all accounts, he was totally calm. He wasn't panic like they're gonna find something whatsoever he was calm he wasn't happy about it but he was calm which is strange you know that why is this guy so calm if he's about to get arrested for being the zodiac killer because if he's got anything there obviously he's going to be pretty uh uh upset about it or at least uh are nervous and they said he wasn't they actually got him to give them some handwriting samples after he showed up they were like well since you're here why don't you go ahead and give us some handwriting samples you know trying to tie him to the zodiac killer letters and he did that for him. So obviously they made him do right and left hand because Arthur Leon was ambidextrous. So that, that, that did happen. He did show up when they were searching the Santa Rosa trailer. But that's kind of the short story of how Arthur Leon comes up was, was because of uh, Robert Graysmith's book. But Fred Manali is a different character. He shows up because he got killed, like we talked about in the last episode, in a head-on collision. And uh, they found drawings. I, uh, one account I heard, and Tony, you can you can straighten this out for me because I had no idea you knew knew so much about Fred Manali. And Tony's last name is Dinelli, so I'm, if I get those two confused, uh, please forgive me. But Tony Dinelli uh, had a lot of information on Fred Manali, and it did, that took me by surprise, Tony. I didn't know you knew so much about uh, Fred Manali and had so much information on him. But anyway, he becomes a suspect because uh, they found either at his home or in his van they found a drawing of uh, Kim Wendy Allen one of the the I think she was the third Santa Rosa hitchhiker slaying victim I think the first two were were a pair and then Kim Allen was raped and murdered and they found her body dumped by a, a ravine or something like that and she had been strangled and they found a drawing a really detailed drawing of her in the Sato McCast um masochistic always have trouble with that word uh position and fred benali actually had drawn himself as like this drag character called frida uh so it was really bizarre stuff but that's how he became obviously a suspect for um kim wendy allen's murder so 
I, you know, it'd be interesting to, to ever seen that drawing. I mean, I don't know, I guess this guy, I mean, Fred Manali was a, uh, he was a creative writing instructor at Santa Rosa Junior College. So obviously I don't know who drew this stuff, if he had this ability to be able to draw or something like that. And that, that could kind of point to some things with the Zodiac. Cause of course I think the Zodiac, uh, could, uh, was definitely a draftsman, how the letters were all done like that. And I think Robert Graysmith tried to throw it out there one time that, the Zodiac could be a cartoonist or something like that because of the drawings, maybe the bus bomb and stuff like that. So who, who drew the sketch? I, I would assume it's Manali himself. Um, that had it of Kim Wendy Allen. I don't know if this likeness on this sketch was just so much like her that they knew that it was Kim Wendy Allen or if, or if it had her name on it, that's what I don't know. Tony, if you know that definitely email me or, or type in the comments of your on Tony and let me know. Cause you might know the answer to that, that I don't know how they, they, they knew for sure that the sketch was of uh, Kim Allen. And by the way, she's not related to Arthur Lee Allen whatsoever. I definitely went down that trail. Their uh, relatives do go both go back to uh, the state of Kansas, but they're probably distant cousins somewhere, but they're not related. I definitely ran that trap. Arthur Lee Allen and Kim Wendy Allen are not related. But anyway, following up from the last upload, and I was trying to recall the incident where Fred Benally was uh caught for trying to accost this girl back in illinois of course tony had this stuff and he sent it to me and i'm going to read one of the articles now it says man 21 seized on morals count frederick stephen manali 21 1020 scottswood road was arrested thursday thursday after he allegedly threatened a 16 year old girl in the 600 block of south greenbrew avenue deputy sheriffs charged manali with attempting to commit a lewd and lascivious act and logged him into county jail Manali was reading a meter at the girl's home when the alleged incident occurred. Manali admitted grabbing the girl's wrist, but said he merely wanted to talk to her. The girl struggled free and summoned help. The neighbors chased Manali a block before stopping him and holding him for deputy sheriff. So this is, this is the same guy. And he definitely was caught trying to do something to this younger girl. So that between this incident and uh, hi, Fire Pixie, how are you? and trying to and having the drawing of kim wendy allen and the fact that he had been charged for this before uh that that makes him such a strong suspect for at least the murder of kim allen and i know one of the investigating sheriffs had this uh, hypothesis that fred manali probably did murder kim wendy allen and but he didn't do the rest of the santa rosa hitchhiker slings but he was probably responsible for hers and then he had these different scenarios of who maybe killed the rest of them but the murder of Kim Wendy Allen, they do supposedly have DNA from that crime. So why they have not tied it into Fred Benali yet, maybe the, the it's not strong enough of a DNA sample. I'm not sure. I know that they were going to try to do the uh, familial uh, DNA testing on it, the same way they caught the Golden State Killer by putting that into the DNA database and you know the family systems and then trying to find a relative that the person was related to and then kind of narrow it down by geography. That's how they caught the Golden State Killer. Of course, when that happened, everybody had renewed interest that maybe they'll find the Zodiac that way. Of course, with the Golden State Killer, you had so much material because he was a rapist. Golden State Killer raped all, all of his, his victims. And Kim, Kim uh, Wendy Allen was also sexually assaulted. That's why they have a DNA sample uh, in her particular murder. And I know some of the Santa Rosa hitchhiker slings, they either weren't uh, a sexual assault involved or they don't have any material from them. But as I understand, they do have it from Kim Wendy Allen's murder. So I, I'm just assuming it's either a weak sample or they're still trying to figure out how to trace this. Um, yeah, this guy says, uh, render exhume if the suspect was buried. True, but I think he's got siblings that could still be alive or definitely cousins, but uh, they could. I think if you exhume the body, you could definitely get DNA that way. But why wouldn't they look into Manali, at least for Kim Wendy Allen, and get that one off the books? I don't understand that. And uh, someone had asked on the comment section whose jurisdiction this is in. According to Tony, it's in the Sonoma County Sheriff's Department jurisdiction, this case. So they need to definitely do a DNA, at least if they have any kind of sample against Fred Manali, at least for Kim Allen, and then go look into the others because this is crazy. The fact that he surely they know this about the guy how he got caught trying to do something to the 16 year old back when he lived in illinois way before he moved to uh northern california but that between the this and the drawing are enough to go find it like you said if you have to exhume them find a relative whatever you got to do fast track it at least rule them out if it wasn't him at least rule the guy out i mean this could tie into other murders maybe zodiac maybe not but why would they not 
go after him first, at least in, in Kim Allen's case. And I think the only difference between Kim Allen and some of the rest of the Santa Rosa hitchhiker slaying victims was the rest of them were runaways. Kim Allen was not. She actually came from a pretty good family. Uh, she was attending Santa Rosa Junior College. I don't know. Tony, you would know if she actually had a class where Manali was the professor, a creative writing class or something like that. But I know her friends got together after she was murdered and had a scholarship or a fund in her name. I know her father also got something established there uh, in his daughter's name uh, after she was murdered. So that definitely, that really needs to be looked at. So, so that was one of them. Actually, Tony sent me two different articles about that incident where Manali was trying to, uh, Accost that girl, so it definitely happened. And Tony sent me this. He's talking about the CODIS and the DNA. It says the current status. I guess this is all the stuff with Santa Rosa, but it says these cases represent eight of fifty-four total unsolved homicides between the years nineteen seventy and two thousand six within the jurisdiction of the Sonoma County Sheriff's Office. In two thousand eleven, cold storage DNA from some of the cases was submitted to the Combined DNA Index System. That's CODIS for short a national DNA database. In 2018, DNA was brought out of testing hoping to identify the killer or killers in the same manner of the Gold State killer was caught. Two days after Manali was killed in a, in a um, head-on car accident. And, and then he's going back, of course, Tony's uh, talking about the, uh, the ad that was put in the San Francisco Chronicle and it said, Zodiac, your partner is in deep real estate. You're next. The Imperial Wizard can save you. Surrender to him or I will terminate your case, R.A. And I know if you look at ZodiacCyphers.com, it kind of ties in that newspaper clipping to another one where it mentioned uh, a psychiatrist and another patient. It's real complex and convoluted. But, you know, of course, this ad being put out two days after Manali was killed in that car accident, it's kind of what people could read that is Manali was somehow a partner with the Zodiac Killer. Because it says Zodiac, your partner is in deep real estate, meaning Manali's dead and he's going to be buried, or, or, or you know, just implying that he's dead. Imperial Wizard, of course, it's like a Ku Klux Klan uh, phrase. No one really knows what that means, but then it says surrender to him, or I will terminate your case. R A, and of course that could be I think Richard Adams or another name like that. It's kind of convoluted, but the timing is strange. How Manali's killed, and then two days later, this ad pops up about Zodiac. And of course, there are things that point to Manali possibly being Zodiac. We talked about that. Of course, the main thing against him is he's really tall. Manali was 6'3". He looked really thin, although there's not pictures from him around that time, of course, of Lake Herman Road or uh, Lake Berryessa or anything like that. They all seem like they're older photographs from college and stuff of Manali. But he was definitely 6'3", thin guy, looked like a basketball player, Bill, which in Zodiac was stocky, not, not as tall as Manali. And we know from someone that had talked to Manali's sister that Fred Manali had a terrible stutter. Like he was a horrible stutterer. And they, they said that he, 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 I don't know how this guy could see, if he was that bad, I don't know how he's, he's an English professor. You know, how, why would they hire him? I just stuttered right now. But why would they hire the guy if his stutter was that bad? I don't know. He says, uh, render the suspect supposedly was large enough to have the, the, the bodies into the ravines. That's a good point. I wanted to bring that up and you reminded me because I didn't make a note about that. Uh, whoever this person was, and I think he's talking about the Santa Rosa hitchhiker slings murderer, that he must have been really strong the way the bodies were thrown into the ravines. Uh, so we know Allen was strong. Arthur Lee Allen was a strong guy by all accounts. I've read enough about Arthur Lee Allen, which he was very strong. He might not have been in the best of shape, particularly during the Zodiac crimes, and, and probably a lot worse by the time the Santa Rosa hitchhiker slings happened starting in 72. But even then, I'm sure Arthur Lee Allen was a really strong guy. I just don't think he was the Santa Rosa hitchhiker killer. But Manali at 6'3", uh, looked pretty fit. Uh, I would, you know, He was probably strong enough to do that. But it definitely would weak out a, a smaller guy or something like that that they determined. So he is right. Somebody was pretty strong the way these bodies were disposed of in the Santa Rosa hitchhiker slings. So going back to Zodiac with Manali, a lot of his phrasings are similar to some of the stuff Zodiac said because you know there's a lot of writings from Manali because he was a creative writing teacher and a lot of his you know students had his writings. I don't know how they got all these, but they're on the internet. And he uses "I shall" a lot, which is pretty uncommon like the Zodiac did. And somebody said that it could be because being a stutterer, uh, uh, stutters have trouble with the word W, like I will, like woo, you know, the woo sound in, in will. So they might can say something like I shall a lot easier than I will. So maybe he 
would say I shall because of he was a stutterer and then maybe you know uh, transpose that over to his writing and would say I shall instead of I will but I, I don't know that's just all kind of here and there but it's similar uh, how he would do that like the Zodiac and some of his phrasings are similar but like I said Brian Hartnell never talked about a stutterer like Barry Essa of course he engaged the Zodiac in conversation no one noticed anyone as tall as 6'3 we're you know talking about a stocky guy so he doesn't fit the physical descriptions at all and he has that stutter but some of his writings are similar but you know with Manali like I said before I don't see the mathematic background that I see with the Zodiac and you know he's a creative writing teacher so you know, there's, you know could he have been partnered with somebody and that's that explains the ad i mean it's possible it hasn't been proven but you know anything anything's possible in this case it's just really really strange so let me look at some of this other stuff that tony sent i couldn't believe how much tony had on this we never ever we've only talked about zodiac we never talked about santa rosa really and we've never talked about fred Manali. and it's just tony had all this stuff on there and he's talking about um, this stuff here. I think it's this is when the first body was found. It's from the Press Democrat. It says a 16 year old boy hiking through the wooden hills of Northeast Santa Rosa in 1972 stumbled upon a human skull, bleached from the elements. He thought it was an artifact, but the skull wasn't from an ancient burial site as the youth imagined. It was a sign of a young life brutally cut short. They were just little baby girls, said Glenn Frost of the adolescents age 12 and 13. These were the first two victims of the Santa Rosa hitchhiker murderer whose remains he discovered while with, uh, discovered while with a friend. From early 1972 to mid-1979, the bodies of seven girls and young women were found in rural Santa Rosa, buried or dumped along steep embankments or in creek beds. All were found nude. Some had been raped, strangled, or hogtied. Waves of detectives have tried solving the cases, particularly when a serial homicide suspect emerges somewhere, such as a recent Marin County case. The Sonoma County 1970s murders have haunted not just family members, but also detectives, friends, and even strangers who became connected to the cases. It's firmly stuck in my mind, uh, those names said Frost, who runs a Santa Rosa concrete firm. I'm 55 going on 56 years old. For nearly 40 years, the seven case files have slowly expanded. The emergence of DNA evidence has led another generation of detectives to search for clues. This year, they have sifted through the evidence preserved through the decades in freezers and submitted possible DNA samples to a national database. The science is different now. We're hoping something comes back, said Lieutenant Dennis O'Leary, who runs the Sonoma County Sheriff's Office Violent Crime Unit. I don't know when this article's from, but I'll find out. Current investigators declined to specify which cases or what material contained possible DNA. I know, we're sure now that was Kim Allen. However, former coroner's officials said semen was present in some of the cases according to newspaper archives. So maybe there's more than just Kim Allen. Results could take months or longer because lab technicians must handle recent cases first, O'Leary said. Detectives also hope someone might finally, finally offer an essential clue. The families have no closure. We as law enforcement don't have closure, said veteran sheriff's detective Gary Ferentes. So then it just goes on to the different cases of the Santa Rosa hitchhiker slings. But like I said, Manali, he's got to get looked at or at least rule him out and let everybody know. Yeah, this guy, he, he just said that. Yeah, it definitely sounds like it, it is the jurisdiction of Sonoma County because he's happened. It looks like, you know, these ruler spot, more rural spots that it's outside the actual city of Santa Rosa. And then, of course, I didn't mention the detail of Kim Wendy Allen. And she was supposedly carrying this soy barrel that would contain soy sauce. It was like a 19 pound barrel, as I understand, when it's empty. So I assume the barrel was empty and it had these. Chinese letterings on it that's similar to the markings on the Zodiac's Exorcist letter. So that's that tie-in. And I've looked at them. They don't look that close. And people have thought, well, if the Zodiac was into the Mikado, maybe he liked that uh, that kind of writing or something like that. Of course, the Mikado is Japanese, or of course, it's written by a couple of English guys. But it was, it, you know, it's Japanese, not Chinese. And the soy barrel was obviously Chinese. But I don't know why. Kim Wendy Allen had that barrel if it had something to do with her job at the time or, or or something like that but she did have this 
soy barrel in her possession like a, it was this wooden barrel that had these chinese markings on it so that was another possible tie into zodiac this barrel that had the markings like the zodiac's exorcist letter so definitely something that needs to be looked into more but you know manali is a is a just a creepy guy it says manali was seen at the skating rink the same day kim Wendy allen went missing i don't know that's a good question i'll ask tony uh if you know in manali it would definitely been somebody that, that probably knew kim allen even if she didn't have his class i mean i don't think santa rosa junior college was that big probably knew her and probably she would have felt comfortable taking a ride with him and as i understand when manali was killed in that car accident he did was driving a van some sort of van and a lot of the witnesses and at least two or three of the uh, disappearances of these runaways in the santa rosa hitchhiker murders that they they did spot a van someone that, that there was a they spotted a suspect that was a white guy that looked like he had an afro type hair but they and i think in two of the instances they did describe a van and manali i i'm almost sure had a van when he was killed in that head-on accident so definitely more to look at and what i would love to know is if they've ever released and if tony or anybody knows even on here let me know how you know what that drawing looked like of kim allen did it was it just so clear that they knew it was kim allen or did it did he write her name on it uh, you know, how was he, how did he draw himself? How did they know it was him in drag? This character that he created for himself called, uh, Frida or Freda, I think it was Frida based, you know, of course on Fred, but how did they know unless he named this, like he put it under and put Frida and it looks so much like him. I mean, did Fred Manali have this, uh, ability to sketch things like that? Cause that would be interesting, you know, might have Zodiac implications, but it would just be interesting that this creative writing instructor has this all other talent of other than writing that he can draw these sketches that are so lifelike that they knew it was Kim Wendy Allen and uh what did his wife know because I think at the time of this murder that, that Manali was still married to his wife before she got divorced and remarried his uh his boss in the English department so these are things that all need to be looked at and I'm going to do more on it. I know Tony will send me more, and I'm still sifting through everything you sent me, Tony. I had no idea you had such a collection of stuff about Fred Manali that I didn't even know was out there. But, you know, definitely he's the, my top suspect for Kim Wendy Allen's murder. And, you know, does he tie any of these others? Personally, I don't think Arthur Lee Allen's involved. You know, possibly Arthur Lee Allen knew Fred Manali. I don't know from where. Santa Rosa was a pretty big place. I think the, where Arthur Lee Allen lived at, in the uh, Sunset Trailer Park, where his trailer was was about, you know, fairly close to wherever Manali lived at the time, but not that close. I mean, Santa Rosa is pretty, pretty good sized town. So who knows? I mean, anything's possible, but I don't think, I don't see Alan doing anything that's sadistic uh, like that and raping women and all that. Like I said, when Alan got caught molesting, you know, went to prison for child molesting when he went to a Tascadero, it was for younger, younger boys, 12, 13, and he didn't even threaten to kill him if they told him. He just said, hey, don't tell your mom. Uh, so it's just would be really uh, a really big uh, you know crazy uh, turn of events if Arthur Lee Allen was involved and of course the chipmunk hair I think that's just something Grace Smith probably made up or you know maybe they found some wild animal here of course they were thrown into ravines out in the wild in, in uh on the outskirts of Santa Rosa so any kind of animals could have been there so if they found a squirrel hair or something like that maybe Grace Smith calls that a chipmunk hair to, to better tie that into Arthur Lee Allen because you just can't take you know we know from Zodiac you can't take everything he says uh literally or at 100 percent we just can't because he just blurred the line so much with that doesn't mean he was wrong about everything but he definitely and stretch the truth quite a bit so we have to take that with a grain of salt but that's all i have for now but definitely i'm going to do another one on manali because it's just too interesting and try to get some of these other questions answered about it but i uh, hope everybody has a good new year and thanks for tuning in please make sure you catch the next upload and if you haven't already done so please consider subscribing appreciate it thanks